Stephen, you're already home, aren't you? Upon returning home after her daughter's wedding, Karen found that her husband, Stephen, who was supposed to have returned earlier, was nowhere to be seen. Instead, Karen heard the voice of an unfamiliar young woman. Oh, someone's here, Stephen. Who are you? Why are you barging into someone else's house? That's my line. Why is an old lady like you barging into someone else's house? This is called trespassing, you know. The woman unapologetically called Karen an outsider. Then Stephen, wrapped in a bathrobe, appeared from the bathroom. What? You're already back? Stephen glared at Karen as if she were something unpleasant. What's going on? Why is there a woman I don't know in this house? I'm going to be Stephen's wife soon. You're in the way, so please leave. Confused by what the woman was saying, Karen looked at Stephen with pleading eyes. That's right, she's Margaret, a subordinate from my company. I've decided to marry Margaret, so I want you to leave this house immediately. Stephen said this matter-of-factly. I refuse. Do you have any idea how much I've devoted myself to you? This house is mine, the land and the property. I earned everything. You have no say in this. Way to go, Stephen. It's cool how you can say it so clearly. Now that you understand, hurry up and pack your things and leave this house. Humiliated by Stephen and Margaret's mockery, Karen felt like crying, but realizing she no longer had a place there in front of the hand-holding couple, she accepted her fate. With the divorce papers already filled out in her bag, Karen left the familiar home, walking into the pouring rain. My name is Karen. I am a 52-year-old housewife who supported my workaholic husband, Stephen, while raising our only daughter. After graduating from college, Ashley worked for a trading company but struggled to find a good match. Maybe I'm just not good at love, she would say, somewhat disheartened. Recently, however, she was recognized by a young entrepreneur from a client company and got engaged. I was relieved. I had hoped to enjoy a leisurely retirement with Stephen. However, Hey Karen, is dinner not ready yet? I'm starving after coming back from work. I wasn't sure when you'd be home. No excuses! A good wife would have dinner ready no matter what time I come home. What's this meal? The meat is tough. Haven't I always said I like it tender? Think about how it's cooked and start over from scratch. At least have the bath ready before I get home. You're a housewife. You must have all day, right? Show some initiative. Who do you think provides for you to eat every day? Stephen always had this way of asserting his superiority over me. But given his important role as a sales director in a large corporation, Stephen did have a good salary. It's true that his income allowed our family to live comfortably, which is why I couldn't talk back to him with much force. My concerns weren't just about Stephen. One day, when I noticed regular large withdrawals from our joint account, I asked Stephen about it. Sorry, Karen, I didn't want to worry you unnecessarily, but Melissa, who lives at my parents' house, insisted she desperately needed the money. And he replied with a troubled look and a sigh. Stephen's sister, Melissa, had been married at one point, but due to a falling out with her in-laws, the marriage ended in just a few years. Now she was back living at their parents' house. Since Melissa took care of Stephen when their parents were busy with their jobs during their childhood, even the usually arrogant Stephen couldn't be firm with her. Melissa is really struggling. She's always been careless with money. If she wants something, she buys it without thinking ahead, which is why she's always broke. I think her spending habits were a big reason her marriage didn't work out. She always relies on me because I have a good job and position. I totally agreed with Stephen's opinion. I thought Melissa saw Stephen merely as a convenient wallet. Even at family gatherings at our parents' house, Melissa, always relying on Stephen, would just smile and never say thank you when our eyes met. When I mentioned this to Stephen as we were leaving, he, gripping the steering wheel, said, Melissa's rudeness isn't new, but... You're right, not saying thank you is bad. I'll speak to her about it later. I might be wrong to say this to Stephen, but I find her difficult. The money we give her every month was supposed to be saved for Ashley's wedding. 
Over time, I started referring to my sister-in-law, not by her name, but as her. And Stephen didn't blame me for it. Instead, he understood my feelings. If you're uncomfortable with Melissa, you don't have to force yourself to see her. From now on, I'll go to family gatherings alone. You don't have to meet Melissa anymore. He said in an unusually gentle tone, which made me feel relieved. Ashley, my daughter, seems to become more beautiful as she gets engaged, which might sound odd coming from me, her mother. Ashley has always been serious, focusing solely on her career at the trading company, even as her friends got married one after another. Half-jokingly, I said, Ashley married her job. I've always been worried as a mother because Ashley never seemed interested in men. But when Ashley said she wanted to marry someone, you're joking, right? I couldn't accept it right away. And it turns out the guy she's talking about is in his 20s, started his own company, and climbed to the top position in the country as an entrepreneur. Are you sure it's okay to marry such an ideal person? I couldn't help but ask Ashley, recalling Stephen's arrogance. Ashley laughed and said, It's fine. Unlike Dad, he's proactive about cooking and cleaning. He promised we'd work together on things we can do as a couple. When my daughter's fiancé, Richard, came to greet us, he maintained a humble demeanor throughout the visit, making us feel almost embarrassed by his modesty. He greeted us politely from start to finish. Please allow me to marry Ashley. Stephen, perhaps because of his position as a director of a top company, felt a competitive spirit towards his daughter's fiancé and asked in a condescending tone, Is your business doing well? But Richard, unfazed, replied, I hope to have a good relationship with you, not just personally, but also professionally. Faced with such a response, even Stephen, with his achievements as a sales director, found no reason to refuse. I look forward to working with you. For once, the usually arrogant Stephen smiled broadly and was polite to someone else. I hope this will soften Dad's personality a bit. Ashley whispered with a laugh. That would be nice. I chuckled along, saying. However, as Ashley's wedding approached within three months, Stephen's attitude towards me became even colder than before. Why didn't you iron my shirt? Look at this shirt. It's all wrinkled. I'll be laughed at by my clients. I prepared another shirt as usual. Isn't that okay? Today's clients aren't ordinary. They're important customers who could influence the future of my company. I can't just wear any regular shirt. Then you should have told me yesterday. It's difficult for me when you suddenly demand things. Frustrated by Stephen's one-sided criticism, I couldn't help but retort sharply. Then, why are you acting so high and mighty? Can't even properly iron a shirt and you call yourself my wife? A real wife would know what shirt her loving husband needs to wear without being told. I can't deal with such unreasonable demands. Holding back tears, I hurriedly ironed the shirt. Here, it's done. Is this okay? Even as I handed over the shirt, Stephen, far from expressing gratitude, scolded me further. Hurry up! How are you going to take responsibility if I'm late to the company because of you? Fuming, he slammed the front door and stormed out. What's with that attitude? Can't even say thank you. No better than Melissa. I vented my frustration to the now empty doorway, unable to say it directly to Stephen. Stephen's treatment of me didn't stop there. Why are you eating too? You've been gaining weight recently, haven't you? Due to your age, maybe? You should just eat once a day and spend the rest of your time cooking delicious meals just for me. Your beloved husband is home. Come on, give me a shoulder massage. Do I have to tell you everything? You're so useless. I can find a replacement for you anywhere. He seemed to think of me as a convenient maid or robot, programmed to do his bidding. Believing himself an elite because of his high salary, he looked down on me, who had been a housewife for years, as if she couldn't do anything if she went back to society now. Stephen was the one who had said to me, who used to work in a high-end shop, Quit your job when we get married and devote yourself to me. It was Stephen who said that. I found fulfillment in my work and enjoyed interacting with customers, 
wanting to continue working as long as possible. But I gave up my job without a second thought, thinking it was the least I could do for Stephen, who I loved. Now, being looked down upon for being just a housewife infuriated me. I really wanted to retort, Then make your own meal! That's what I wanted to say. And Stephen, in his anger, threw the meal I had prepared onto the floor. Pick it up! What's with that look? If you have a complaint, you're free to leave this house right now. No, it's nothing. I'm sorry, I'll clean it up right away. I managed to suppress my anger and could only apologize. In the midst of such a daily life, Ashley, with her wedding just a day away, wanted to spend time with her family of three for the first time in a while and came to visit. Motivated by this, I put extra effort into cooking, and Ashley said, Mom's cooking really is the best. Ashley said something that made me happy, but Stephen just snorted and remained expressionless. What's wrong? Dad seems to be in a bad mood. Are you sad because I'm getting married soon? Teasing him, Ashley got no response from Stephen. Hey, Karen, coffee. He commanded. Still acting all high and mighty. Don't come crying to me when Mom runs away from you one day. Anyone who wants to leave can leave. It's not like they have a job. It's obvious they'll come crawling back when they run out of money. Your personality hasn't softened at all. In fact, it seems to have gotten worse. Ashley, with a look of disbelief, said, I just gave a wry smile and tried to calm the situation. It's the same as always. The doorbell rang and Ashley said, I'll get it. She went to the entrance and came back with a small, rectangular box in her hand. The sender's name is Margaret. Dad, do you know her? Stephen immediately stood up and demanded, Give it to me, trying to snatch the package away. But Ashley quickly covered the package with her body and said, What's the rush, Dad? You seem suspicious. Mom, open it and see. She handed me the small box. As I was about to unwrap the box, Stop! Stephen tried desperately to stop me, but Ashley countered, If there's nothing to be guilty about, then it should be fine. Stephen, lost for words, finally gave up resisting. Such a bold tie pattern. I wonder what occasion it's meant for to be the right choice. The tie in the small box was incredibly flashy and seemed entirely out of character for Stephen. Right. That's the tie I was planning to wear to Ashley's wedding tomorrow. I remembered. I had asked one of my subordinates to buy something nice if they found it. Stephen answered so quickly it was surprising. However, I quickly doubted what he was saying. That's odd. You wouldn't choose such a flashy tie for a wedding, would you? It's definitely strange. What kind of taste does the subordinate who chose this tie have, I wonder? Ashley also looked at Stephen skeptically and pressed, What's the deal, Dad? And I pressed the issue. Right, sending such a tie for a wedding. The young people these days really lack common sense. I took out my mobile phone, intending to call the contact listed as the sender. What are you doing? Stop it! Even if it's a mistake, they went to the trouble of buying and sending a tie for you. It's only right for me, as your wife, to thank them. Stop it. Don't embarrass me like that. No, since I asked them, I'll thank them myself. Saying this, Stephen forcibly took the mobile phone from my hand. Why are you so flustered? It seems like you're desperately trying to hide something. Are you doubting me? A useless housewife doubting her husband who earns the money? If you're doubting me so much, it must be you who has the guilty secret, right? Why would you think that? I'm just worried because you're acting differently than usual, that's all. So you're trying to shift your guilt onto me? So you do have something to hide from me. If you hate me that much, you can leave right now. Stephen always resorts to saying leave whenever something comes up. It makes me wonder if he's the one who doesn't want to be with me. I don't care who's right, but please get along until at least after my wedding tomorrow. Ashley looked back and forth between Stephen and me as she reprimanded us. The wedding the next day was grand, befitting the fame of the entrepreneur groom, with guests from the business world in attendance, not just family and relatives. Our side of the family was quite overwhelmed. 
The party went on lively, and during the bride's letter to her parents, I'll never forget how mom cared for me tirelessly when I was rushed to the hospital as a child. Not that I remember any of it, being so young. As Ashley read this with a trembling voice, laughter and tears mixed in the air of the venue. After the party, as I was making my rounds to greet the relatives and other guests, Stephen, Well then, I'll leave the rest to you. He patted my shoulder and was about to leave the venue. Wait a minute, we still need to greet the groom's associates. I'll leave that to you. I have something else I need to do. Something else you need to do? Is it more important than your daughter's wedding? Enough! It's none of your business! Anyway, I'm leaving now. With that, he left the venue, weaving through the guests who were asking where he was going. I remember Stephen was restless during the party, especially at the end when everyone was moved to tears. He kept glancing at his watch. When I expressed my concern and spoke to him, Stephen turned towards me in surprise. It's none of your business, and responded to me with that. Where did Stephen go? Someone from my company would really like to meet him. While offering a polite smile to Richard and the company executive standing next to him, I had no choice but to apologize profusely. I'm sorry, my husband can be quite thoughtless. In the taxi on the way home, I was reminiscing about Ashley's happy face when the driver asked, Was it a family wedding? I hadn't realized I was smiling so broadly until he mentioned it. It was my daughter's wedding. She's grown into such a beautiful bride. Time really flies. Seeing you smile so happily makes me feel a bit of your joy too. Congratulations. The elderly driver smiled through the mirror. Looks like there's a storm coming. It might start pouring soon. He mentioned the weather, but I was too filled with happiness for my daughter's wedding to pay much mind. I asked the driver to stop a bit before my house and handed him a bill. Keep the change. I got out of the taxi in high spirits. Stephen, you're home, aren't you? Feeling someone's presence but not seeing Stephen, I entered the house, only to hear, Oh, someone's here, Stephen. An unfamiliar young woman's voice greeted me. Excuse me, but who are you exactly? Why are you entering someone else's home without permission? I could say the same to you. Why is an old lady like you entering someone else's home without permission? That's called trespassing, you know. The woman called me an outsider without a hint of remorse. Then, Stephen, wrapped in a bathrobe, emerged from the bathroom. This is the first time I'm seeing you dress like that. Thinking of becoming a movie star? What? You're back already? Stephen glared at me as if I were something unpleasant. What's this about? Why is there a woman I don't know acting like she owns the place? Excuse me, I'm going to be Stephen's wife soon. You're in the way, so please leave. Confused by what she was saying, I looked at Stephen with pleading eyes. That's right. She's Margaret, a subordinate from my company. I've decided to marry Margaret, so I want you to leave this house immediately. Stephen said this matter-of-factly. Hearing the name Margaret, I immediately thought of the woman from the tie incident. I had promised to leave you and live with Margaret after Ashley's wedding was over. I refuse. Do you have any idea how much I've devoted myself to you? This house is mine, the land and the property. I earned everything. You've just been sleeping all day inside the house. While you've been enjoying your days, I've been running around to clients, working hard. Now that our daughter is married, can't I enjoy my life a bit more? You have no say in this. Way to go, Stephen. It's so cool that you can speak your mind like a real man. Now that you understand, hurry up and pack your things and leave this house. Stephen and Margaret looked at me triumphantly and mocked me. My anger towards Stephen reached its peak, and I was so upset I couldn't even cry. Realizing I had no place there anymore in front of the hand-holding couple, I knew I had to leave. Stephen handed me the filled-out divorce papers, and I had to leave the home I was so familiar with. As I opened the front door, a gust of wind brought in a heavy rain. Caught off guard, I couldn't bring myself to go back inside for an umbrella, and started walking in the rain, slumped over. The cheerful cheers from the wedding venue just two hours ago seemed drowned out by the sound of rain hitting the asphalt 
and I couldn't tell if the water streaming down my cheeks was rain or tears. The unpleasant sound of water rushing down the drain made it seem like the 30 years I spent with Stephen were being washed away just as easily. Lost and without direction, I found myself sitting on a swing in a park in the pouring rain, my mind blank. Then, a woman, entering the park, offered me her umbrella. Come under the umbrella, you'll catch a cold, she said to me. What are you doing out here? The person who approached me was my sister-in-law, Melissa. What am I doing here? That should be my line. Stephen has really made a foolish move, hasn't he? Leave the rest to me. Melissa then smiled cunningly. Everything is going according to plan. Time to start our counterattack. She urged me to stand up, leading me to a waiting black car and ushering me into the back seat. Karen, you don't have to cry and endure this alone. I'll protect you. We won't let them have their way. Her words were enough to warm my chilled body and heart, soaked from the rain. Rewinding three months back, there was a family gathering, and considering my busy husband, I'll go by myself, I said. Although I had always felt uneasy around Melissa, I thought it necessary to show my face occasionally to avoid any negative rumors within the family. Stephen said, You don't have to force yourself to go. Stephen tried to stop me, but I attended the gathering without telling him, where I met Melissa after several years. Upon seeing me, Melissa immediately smiled. Oh, Karen, it's been a while. She welcomed me with a smile, as if we were old friends who had unexpectedly crossed paths. Caught off guard by her reaction, I took the opportunity to ask her how much money she had borrowed from Stephen and whether she had any plans to repay it. However, borrowing money from Stephen? Karen, what are you talking about? I have no idea. Melissa tilted her head as if hearing such a story for the first time. How did this story come about? She asked in return. After helping out at the gathering and settling down in the living room with some coffee, my misunderstanding about Melissa quickly dissolved. Melissa was, in fact, a skilled businesswoman managing several companies and was not short of money. Later, when I spoke to my daughter's husband, Richard, he said, I know Melissa well too. She's been very supportive of my company since its founding, and I owe much of my success to her. Melissa had a good reputation in the industry, and as I came to know the truth about Melissa, another suspicion arose in me. Why would Stephen lie about lending money to Melissa? Melissa seemed genuinely surprised. Stephen said that? But he told me to keep my distance from you because you didn't like me. We shared the truths we knew with each other. I see. Stephen didn't want us to meet probably because he was afraid his lies would be exposed. What is he hiding from us? The question was where the money Stephen secretly withdrew, deceiving me in the process, was going. Has Stephen been acting differently lately? Any signs of another woman? If you notice anything suspicious, let me know. I'll also consult with a lawyer friend of mine. Saying this, Melissa and I formed an alliance behind Stephen's back three months ago. After being kicked out of my home, I stayed at Melissa's place for the night and went to a law firm she knew the next day. The firm had several lawyers specializing in divorce and infidelity cases, and Melissa confidently introduced me to one of the skilled lawyers there. It turned out Melissa had already briefed the lawyer about the situation three months prior, and the lawyer had hired a private investigator to look into Stephen's affairs. We've just received the investigation report. Over the past three months, your husband has had multiple secret meetings with a subordinate named Margaret in hotels. There's no mistake. We have solid evidence. And there's more. We tracked the money flow and found that right after withdrawing money from the bank account, your husband would buy luxury brands for Margaret or take her on trips. Hearing the lawyer's report made Melissa and me feel embarrassed beyond belief. Moreover, the money was from the bank account we had saved for our daughter's wedding, which Stephen had withdrawn without permission and blamed on Melissa's supposed debts. I don't consider such a person my brother anymore. I won't hold back against him. Melissa seemed angrier than I was, 
and together with a lawyer, we confronted Stephen and Margaret at their home. Faced with the unexpected team-up of Melissa and me, Stephen tried to flee. Stephen, don't run away! What kind of old man behaves like this? His own sister berated him fiercely, and he reluctantly returned to the living room. We presented the investigation report and the detailed account of the money flow gathered by the lawyer as evidence against them. Thanks to forming an alliance with Melissa, all your misdeeds have been exposed. I approached the two of them. Bringing up such things now was insane. You knew I was seeing Margaret, didn't you? We weren't hiding our relationship. Exactly. We made our relationship public last night. Now that your annoying daughter is married, we can finally be a legitimate couple. Hearing their unrepentant responses, the lawyer calmly stated, Continuing a relationship secretly despite knowing he's married constitutes clear infidelity. This will result in a significant compensation claim. Are you prepared for that? And pursues them. Then, Margaret stood up, snatched my handbag. This bag must be another gift from Stephen, right? You can't do anything without him. You've been dumped by Stephen. Margaret screamed as she scratched and stomped on the handbag, ultimately throwing it out the window. How could you do that? That bag was a precious gift from Ashley! The bag wasn't purchased with my husband's salary. It was a gift from my daughter Ashley when she received her first paycheck after starting her job. Mom, thank you. It was a cherished memory, a gift given to me by Ashley along with her feelings of gratitude. With the destruction of property, the compensation you'll owe is only going to increase. This could even go beyond a civil case. The lawyer, with a stern expression, further criticized Margaret's actions as if to drive the point home. Now I've fully come to my senses. I have no regrets or unfinished business with Stephen. Thank you for everything, or rather, for letting me take care of you. Margaret, he's all yours now. Goodbye. With those words, I left the home I had lived in for many years. Eventually, Stephen and I officially divorced. It's for the best. A pompous husband like that will soon find himself alone. You must feel relieved and refreshed, right, Mom? When I told Ashley about Stephen's affair and our divorce, she reassured me with a smile. The next day, Ashley immediately invited me and Stephen to her and Richard's new home. In front of Stephen, Ashley mercilessly recounted everything to her husband, Richard. In that case, please consider any business dealings with Stephen's company null and void. Wait, Richard! I'm Ashley's father, you know. Ashley, convince Richard. Ashley, after making eye contact with me, slowly nodded and said, Don't start playing the father card now. Mom and I have decided to cut ties with you. Ashley indecisively disowned her own father in a calm tone. Stephen, having lost a significant business partner due to his infidelity, found his position at work jeopardized and resorted to almost threatening sales tactics. This led to a backlash with numerous complaints from many business partners. Richard later visited. This is just what I heard, but... And prefaced, Stephen was eventually asked to pay a significant amount of compensation by his company and was dismissed for misconduct. He told me. To me, Stephen had become a stranger. I couldn't care less. I laughed and listened. Even after divorcing Stephen, my relationship with Melissa remained positive. We just had an opening for an office staff member in one of my subsidiaries. Karen, would you be interested in taking the position? She offered me a lifeline when I was struggling with my life. Occasionally, Stephen would come to my condominium. Listen, Margaret called me trash just because I couldn't earn a high salary anymore. To her, I was just a tool for making money. Karen, I realize now that I need you. He shouted through the door, but I completely ignored his pleas. I already had someone in mind for a potential new relationship. My new partner was a divorced man who worked in the same office. He was friendly, humble, and the complete opposite of the arrogant Stephen, which made him very likable. As soon as I moved into a cheaper apartment, 
Margaret ran off with another young man. What should I do now? Hey, just a little would help. Can you lend me some money? I grew tired of Stephen's desperate calls and had the security guard escort him out. As the sky looked like it was about to rain, I was bringing in the laundry from the balcony when I saw Stephen leaving, his shoulders slumped. I hoped he wouldn't get caught in the rain, but then again, it didn't really matter to me. Just then, Melissa called, and Stephen's concerns were quickly pushed to the back of my mind. Melissa, thank you for the delicious full-course meal the other day. Oh, this Sunday? Sure, I'm free. Whether it's golf, shopping, or anywhere else, I'd love to join you. I responded with an exceptionally cheerful voice.